hell talk about Newton's law of gravitation and Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will talk about string theory and you might ask, is there anything new here? Not exactly, but there is a nice conversation out there between the godfather of string theory, Edward Witten, and his prophet, Brian Greene. And just to remind you from the tone these guys set, string theory promised to be an all-encompassing theory of everything. And Greene said, we believe we can realize Einstein's dream. Physicists are confident that we continue where Einstein has left off. Would love to hear Einstein's comments on that, but yeah. Here's another quote, according to superstring theory, the marriage between the laws of the large and the small is not only happy but inevitable. String theory has the potential to show that all of the wondrous happenings in the universe are reflections of one grand physical principle, one master equation or mother equation. His colleague David Gross is not less self-confident. In a session, The Coming Revolutions in Particle Physics, he gave a talk many years ago, the power and glory of string theory. Yeah, as I said, just to remind you, it sounds a little bit odd, but maybe you think, okay, I cannot judge. I'm not the expert. Maybe these guys are so smart that nobody can really understand. But I would advise you just, let's listen to five minutes of that conversation and make up your mind. And it's going to be very funny. By the way, I do my best here to give you a non-BS perspective on fundamental physics as practiced one century ago versus what they tell you today is fundamental physics. So if you enjoy the video, leave me a like and a subscription. Now let's go right into the conversation. So when you have a great breakthrough, Edward Witten. This is already funny because there hasn't been any breakthrough of string theory if we talk about physics. To host Edward Witten for tonight's conversation. He is widely regarded as the greatest physicist of our era, the only physicist to receive the Fields Medal, the highest. <laughs> this is already so funny and revealing, you know? I mean, to begin with, what does it mean he's regarded? By what metric? And yeah, critique of the Nobel Prize apart here, he didn't get any. He got the Fields Medal for mathematics. So ask yourself why? Well, maybe because he's not a physicist. His ideas and research has really transformed the entire landscape of our understanding of physics. And so with that, Edward, thank you so much for coming here. <laughs> you see it? Yeah, look at the words, look at the babble here. He didn't have any result, he didn't understand anything, but he changed the entire landscape of understanding, whatever that means. So I just wanted to quickly pick up ever with a conversation that we had 39 years ago. Yeah, let that sink in 40 years without any result. What kind of a physical field is that? It was at Harvard, you just given the Loeb lectures. Yes. And I was a young uh, graduate student or postdoc, I can't recall. So and there 1986 was 1986, we're talking about, about 1986. So exactly. probably I was very excited about string theory. You were very excited about string theory. And the environment at Harvard and many places in the country was not particularly supportive of string theory. And so I was sort of hearing these negative things I was working on. So you and I had a moment together and I said, you know, is string theory like here to stay? Yes. And you said 50 years from now, people will still be talking about string theory. <laughs> yeah, that's why Lee Smolin states string theory is presumably the biggest squandering of intelligence in human history. There is absolutely no result, and yet they somehow turned their faded promises into accomplishments. I mean, there was a time when I was almost angry because I found it too embarrassing how much degraded physics was with respect to earlier times. But now I, I kind of feel sad. I mean, look how pitiful these two guys are now in their conversation. People will still be talking about string theory. <laughs> well, That's now 11 years away. Yes. Well, it's easy to predict how in 11 years the situation will be. These guys will still be sitting there and praising the achievements of string theory. Well, we've learned a lot since then, of course. The biggest advance in string theory, when in 1986, we understood string theory um, as a formal perturbation expansion, which means we understood it when quantum effects are very small. But understanding what happens, what happens when quantum effects become strong seems completely out of reach. Well, what we have learned from string theory about the quantum, 
literally nothing. I mean, we know about the quantum since 1900, Max Planck, and then Heisenberg formulated his uncertainty principle in 1927, okay. But still we have no idea why this quantum phenomenology is there to begin with. And a little reminder, quantum has something to do with quantitative. Good physics is quantitative. If you have a result, you can formulate it with measurements and numbers. And string theory has delivered just babble so far. And of course, that was the biggest advancement that happened in the 90s, in the following decade after our conversation, that we got sort of an overview of what happens when quantum effects are big. No, in physics, you don't get sort of an overview, you get insight. And well, if you have a result with visible quantum effects, you get the Nobel Prize like in 2025. But so far, this hasn't anything to do with string theory. And then at the tail end of that was sort of Modestino, Juan Modestino, now my colleague at the Institute, discovered his famous duality between gauge theory and gravity that gave a completely different perspective. Yeah, the duality became famous because string theorists made a lot of propaganda. But in physics, you don't get a different perspective on something. If you do theoretical physics, you get results that can experimentally verify it. And actually gave us what, phys what we call technically a non-perturbative definition of quantum gravity in some situations. A non-perturbative blah 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 of, well sorry, quantum gravity doesn't exist yet. It's an unsolved problem. And the only non-BS approach is Dirac's large numbers, as I pointed out here, that you can test and verify. You know, a complete definition that you can take to the back, sort of. Let that sink in. The result is a definition you can take to the bank. Theoretical physics is not about creating definitions. And you're taking your results to the lab, not to the bank. But I have to say sort of, because... You know. Yeah, probably because this is sort of physics. It's written in a language we don't understand. So then, we, <laughs> off and on for the last 30 years, almost 30 years by now, we've been trying to learn to decipher the language in which Modesena's duality is written. So you don't understand the language, but nonetheless, the result is great. Okay. I mean, despite all this, he has the audacity to compare this approach to Einstein's. Listen. So if I make, could make a contrast between the way Einstein made his greatest discovery, his theory of gravity, known as general relativity. In bits and pieces, Einstein developed the concepts first and then found the theory that matched the concepts. Yeah, you just forgot a tiny little thing. It was Einstein's principle, then the theory, and then the experimental evidence that led to the acceptance of the theory. And without that, Einstein probably would have remained a nobody with some exotic ideas, which would be a proper characterization of most string theorists. Well, except that there are tens of thousands of it. And while string theorists stumbled upon something, I would say physics got infected and is ailing to this day. You made mention of string theory, quantum mechanics, general relativity. So quantum mechanics, we learned way back in the 1920s, yes. vital to understanding the small things in the world, molecules, atoms, subatomic particles. And we did a pretty good job of blending into quantum mechanics, our understanding of electricity, magnetism, nuclear forces. Listen to this. What does that mean? We did a good job in blending all this real serious physics, such as electrodynamics, quantum mechanics, relativity, atomic physics, nuclear physics, all that was accomplished way before this string nonsense in the European physics tradition. It has nothing to do with it, except that the string propaganda says, oh, well, it's all ours. Well, we've yes. had a hard time putting gravity together. Why is it so hard? Uh, gravity is hard because the nonlinear mathematics Einstein used in his theory doesn't agree well with quantum theory. So actually, understanding the other forces in quantum theory with special relativity uh, was very difficult. It really took half a century and didn't come to fruition until the mid-70s with the standard model of particle physics. But, and that barely works. That's interesting because it highlights the schizophrenia of how string theory is dealing with the standard model. On the one hand side, they say, Oh, it's complicated, it's not the final theory, it's a lot of free parameters. We need to replace it with an all-encompassing theory that calculates all these dozens of constants from first principles, from strings. And on the other hand, well, it's compatible 
with the standard model. String theory predicts the standard model. So please, if you do real physics, decide. Either you believe in the standard model, which is a complete mess, or you want to build a grand new theory that every explains everything, but then you have to dump it as garbage. I don't get it. It works because the other forces are described by mathematics that is still nonlinear, but it's not nearly as nonlinear as the mathematics in Einstein's theory. The mathematics in Einstein's theory really does not work with quantum theory as far as we understand it. And the original excitement about string theory in the 80s, in the period where you and I first met, was because string theory actually overcomes that problem and makes it possible to calculate, let's say, quantum corrections to processes involving gravity and get sensible answers. Love that. Makes it possible to calculate quantum corrections. We don't know if these corrections are correct. To processes involved in gravity. What is a process involved in gravity? Hell, talk about Newton's law of gravitation and quantum corrections or Einstein's relativity and corrections. And here's the thing, he gets sensible answers. No, you're not doing physics if you get something what seems sensible to you. You're doing physics if you get results that coincide with the observations. So it seems that Witten still sticks to his preposterous claims, such as string theory automatically predicts gravity. Well, I guess it was described in 1687 by Newton. That was a little bit before string theory. And well, every straight thinking person who wants to explain the origin of gravity has to deal with Mach's principle, such as Denis Schama tried. And the first thing you do is to go to the evidence because the gravitational constants is related to the mass and size of the universe. That's how you do progress with testable hypotheses and numbers, such as cosmology and Dirac's large numbers. So no question that Witten is a talented mathematician, but I think there is no evidence that he has knowledge about physics beyond layman level, such as in real stuff like nuclear physics, electricity, superconductivity, atomic physics, astrophysics. He's an expert in things he believes to be physics, but which never have made a contact to the real world. So to summarize, there's no experimental evidence whatsoever supporting string theory versus not even a theoretical prediction of what a result could look like. And this is the death sentence according to Karl Popper for a scientific theory. And even worse, they seem to not have even an idea about how to predict something. Well, except something might be violated, energy conservation might be violated. Maxwell's theory might be violated and so on and so forth, but this is not positive evidence for anything. If you want to dive a little bit deeper, there is my book Bankrupting Physics. You find there are nice quotes such as from Richard Feynman about string theory and many other details. But yes, I think there is hope because I believe that artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize physics. And since the belief in string theory is largely a sociological effect of groupthink, I think AI has the potential to overcome that kind of insanity. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you are interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.